grand for 300 laps of late model stunt car racing. And where the best half car drivers from the east meet the best from the west on the oval. From Delaware Speedway Park, TSN presents the McCurley Millen 300. This is the Cascar Super Series for the Castro Cup. Castro, manufacturers of GTS. Brought to you in part by Mopar Performance Parts, your first choice, and Chrysler 5-star service. STP, get your car into STP shape. GM Goodwrench Service Plus and AC Delco. Hello everybody, I'm Pat Gonzalez, and today's McCurley Millen 300 is special for several reasons. First of all, it's an opportunity for many of the top drivers from the Cascar Western Series to do battle with their counterparts from the Eastern Series. There's also the national championship that's up for grabs, and this is the second of the two all-important crossover national events that'll count points towards that championship. And finally, there's almost $100,000 in posted awards up for grabs, making this the richest of our Cascar Super Series events. And Craig Hill, 36 drivers, what is it going to take to take the checkered flag here today? Well, Pat, in my mind, it's Advantage East here at Delaware. Number one, it's the home track of Cascar nationally. The Eastern guys have all got a book on this racetrack. They roll their cars off the trailer, make a few minor adjustments, and they're right there as far as setup's concerned. The Western guys, they've been chasing this racetrack over the last couple of days. But 300 laps is a long race path. What it's going to take is good coordination between your crew chief, your driver, and your pit crew, and good communication. You've got to get your driver in and out of the pits quickly so he doesn't go down a lap. Well, over 50 Cascar late model drivers came here to Delaware Speedway. Only the fastest 36 will start today's event. It all began in time trials, where number 88, Dave Whitlock, set the fast time with a lap at 20.651 seconds. So our Mopar Fast 4 looks like this. Well, Dave Whitlock certainly had the right setup for Delaware, and with his experience, he'll make it difficult to pass. Alex Nagy is coming off a second-place finish at our last race and is now making a late-season charge. Eastern and National points leader Dan Shirtliff must have a strong finish here today to maintain his lead. And Rob Neely is finally getting his new Dodge Avenger to work for him. And Pat, I understand that Rob and girlfriend Yvonne are getting married shortly. Well, Yvonne has been very supportive of Rob's racing over the years as we look at the drivers preparing to roll here. There's part of the 13,000 here at Delaware Speedway Park. And over the four days making up this event, some 23,000 have come through the gates here at Delaware. The cars continue to roll as we'll go with 36 starters in all. Seven drivers from the Cascar West Series came here. Six have made the starting grid. There you see Whitlock and Nagy up front. Monahan and Al Turner in the uh, Chevrolet. Good qualifying effort for Wade Lee. He'll start seventh on the grid. He was the highest qualifying Western driver. Robin Buck back in 14th starting position. And then we look at the Duke or Duke Sanchuk. There's Steve Robley in the 28th car, one of the four Thunderbirds. Paul Mathers, who's always fast here at Delaware, 20th starting position. Kelly Williams will start 24th on the grid. And as we go to the back of the grid in the 16th row, Kevin Dowler and Carl Haar, a couple of the Western drivers. And in that uh, very last row, Marshall Mormaluk, another one of the Western drivers, along with Mark Patrick. Well, a lot of the Western drivers, Pat, were complaining about Delaware's turn two. There's a little bit of a rise in the road there, and it can be very difficult to master if you're not used to it. Robin Buck, who will carry one of our onboard cameras, there's a Midas bumper cam, and this view from DJ Kennington's Dodge, as starter Matt Lake gets the 36 cars lined up. Now here's Todd Lewis in the pits. Two important things in today's race. The first one, water. All the drivers have been drinking a lot of it since early this morning. With this heat, they'll have to keep from getting dehydrated. The second, duct tape. They'll take that along with a Kevlar material and wrap their right foot in it. The exhaust running underneath the car tends to give them the cast car version of a hot foot. Well, you can see behind Todd that there's a great crowd here today, Pat. And Todd is right. Inside these late model stock cars, it can reach 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The white flag has been displayed to the field as the cars now warm up, but uh, they'll not have a problem doing that. The temperature here will be pushing 28, 29 degrees Celsius. In fact, the weather has been superb all week long here in Delaware. There's the white flag in the hands of Matt Lake as the cars continue to roll behind that uh, Sebring pace car. And we see photographer Dave Franks there getting some great shots of this class car field as they continue to roll. 30 drivers from the Eastern Series, six drivers.
drivers from the Cascar Western Series. As we saw another one of our onboard cameras there, Duke Sanchak, who will carry that camera in the Power Max. Pontiac as the field now comes up to speed through turn three now off of four. And there's the green flag from Pat Kennington, the honorary starter here as we race into turn one. Alex Nagy, 93, in the AC Delco Monte Carlo, side by side with Cole Sitter in the 88 car. Dave Whitlock as they battle around here on lap number one. The two cars side by side as they come off of turn four to complete lap number one. Whitlock will be the leader at the line, but no, Nagy right there with them. Again, they'll run side by side into turn one. We go on board with Dan Shirtland, the current national points leader in the Goodrich Monte Carlo. Shirtland a little bit further back as the lead battle continues here between 93 Nagy and the 88 car of Dave Whitlock. Great shot there from our tread cam right down at track level as that battle up front continues. A little bit of a gap back to the 0-3 of Jack Monahan running in third. The seven car of Sean Dupuy is fourth. along with 
with Pat Gonzalez and Todd Lewis, and we get ready for the restart after the Neil Fair wreck. Green flag out of the line, 93, Alex Nagy getting a big jump on the 88 car there of Dave Whitlock, and going through in a second was number seven, Sean Dupuy here, 79, Wade Lee, he'll take over third, and Dave Whitlock a little bit slow to come up the speed there, he got shuffled back into fourth, as we look at the cars, fire off a turn for our Sony Tread Cam right there at track level as we go on board with DJ Kennington in the Castrol Dodge Avenger, Kennington continues to work up through the field, he's currently running in 12th, just outside of the top 10, Nagy, 93-year leader, Dupuy, followed by the 79 car of Wade Lee, there you saw Dave Jacobs, number 85, he is currently running in the 10th place position, the 08 car there, the 4th Thunderbird of Sean McGlynn, and then DJ Kennington, who continues to hold on to that 12th place position, but there's some superb racing through the field. Well, there are the current standings, and a tough break for Dave Whitlock, who was on the outside of the track. He's working hard out there, but he slid back to fourth. And Wade Lee in third appears to have figured out this Delaware track. He's jumped from seventh on the grid to third. And here's Todd Lewis in the pits. Neil Fair, the Midas car out early. What happened? Well, we got, we had trouble on the start of the race. It didn't really know what happened there. We went to the back and started working our way back up. And we got guys out there driving with mirrors, you know. The car's not handling good, but they won't let you by. And I got tangled up with Brad Jake in the back straight. He took me down on the inside and broke my brake line. I was done. Tough brake put you out early. It is. Here is the battle for eighth place. Number three, Dan Shirtliff looking on the inside of Al Turner. And Greg, the quick way around. Delaware right now appears to be that bottom groove, and Shirtliff is working it beautifully as he got inside. It's number 16, Al Turner, and he'll take over that eighth place position. Turner runs in ninth. Here comes Dave Jacobs in the 85 car. He is tenth. He'll also look for that ninth place position, looking to go through on the inside as Turner gets hung outside there in that second groove that does not appear to be working at least at this stage of the race. Here comes Turner battling back. McGlynn in the 08 car still runs in 11th and then DJ Kennington in the Castrol Dodge Avenger back in the 12th place spot. A little bit further up the racetrack, the 97 car of Rob Neely. This is the battle for six and Neely gets into the side of Lapsovich and spins him off the racetrack. Well, that's a tough break for Lapsovich, but with this yellow, it'll give us an opportunity to feature another Cascar driver. And here's Pat with our Cascar timeout. For Chrysler five-star service driver Jack Monahan, racing and running a business have always gone hand in hand. Jack used to own Checkered Flag Speedway in Windsor, Ontario, and currently owns and operates Hallmark Memorial while racing this Beauchamp Dodge Avenger in the Cascar Super Series. We asked him about the similarities between racing and running a business. Running your own business and running a race car, I think uh, there's a lot of parallels there whereby uh, you've got to have a plan. You've got to uh, do your homework at, at, in the garage for the race car part of it in the business. You've got to have a business plan, so to speak, of where you want to go, how you want to do it, and, and how to get there. And I think very much in the, in the racing end of it, it's the same way. I, I th you know, you can't go off disorganized because you'll not go nowhere. You go down the road and spend a lot of money and, and, and not have any results out of it. Actually, racing has taught me, uh, I don't know, how can I say this, you can't lie to yourself about your racing because you'll go backwards. Well, you can't lie to yourself about your business strategy either because you go backwards. You know, you have to be honest with yourself uh, in every way. And that's Monaghan currently sitting in fifth position as they get the green flag. And Jack makes a good point that to be successful, you must have a race plan. You know, Pat, it's not enough just to arrive and drive any longer. Greg, I think we're talking about the business of racing with the increased major sponsorship and corporate involvement in the Cascar Super Series, both in the East and the West. We're really talking about race teams that are being run as businesses. As we look at the race leader, 93, Alex Nagy, 79. Wade Lee, who has been on the charge, is up to second. Number seven, Dupuy runs third. And Dan Shirtlift in the Goodrich Monte Carlo is running in the sixth place position. And he is all over 0-3. Speedy Jack Monahan. There's the 88 car of Dave Whitlock as 
14th, and McGlynn will get shuffled back into that 14th place position. So we're seeing a lot of spots being shuffled back and forth. Well, there's the Vanderweese team watching their driver, and this is Pete's second year in the Super Series. He's had a pretty tough year so far this year, Pat. We look at the battle here for fourth place as we go on board with Dan Shirtlip. He is trying to get around the 0-3 car of Jack Monahan. Shirtlip right down to the bottom of the racetrack as he pulls up alongside of Monahan. As they head back to the stripe, Shirtlip will take over that fourth place position at 97. Rob Neely also coming through to move up to fifth. Well, there are the standings with Nagy holding down the point, but back in six, it's Jack Monahan. And I know that Jack's trying desperately to save the front of his car this race. He's wrecked one of those expensive, low-profile noses every race this year. And in fact, it's become a running joke between he and I. Jack ran up as high as third earlier. The top Western driver continues to be Wade Lee, and I asked him to compare his home track to Delaware. Well, the track back home in Calgary is uh, like my home track, and we're really used to the track there, and we got the setup pretty good. This is only our third time here, and we're still, you know, finding it and tweaking the car a little bit. As far as race management goes, I think both tracks pretty much work the same. You just have to play the race out as it goes. Well, there's one unhappy Westerner. The Mopar replay shows that Kevin Dollar has blown the engine on his Ford Thunderbird, and it looks like this will be it for the weekend for him. Race leader continues to be 93. Alex Nagy, as we go on board with the second-place driver, Wade Lee. You can see Wade fighting the steering wheel on that Pontiac just a little bit as he tries to stay close. And now coming through on the inside, that was number seven, Sean Dupuy, who will take over the second-place position. So just a little bit of a miscue there by 79, Wade Lee. And there is the Cascar National Champion, Sean Dupuy, in that Delco battery body Carlo as he's jumped up into the second-place position. And a little bit further back, we look at this battle involving the 0-2 car of Kerry Mix, along with 31 Kelly Williams and the 60 car of Ron Beauchamp. They're having a pretty good battle as uh, they work around through turns three and four. Now we go on board with Ron Beauchamp Jr. and right behind him in the Richard Petty 25th anniversary STP Pontiac. That is the race for 16th place involving Robin Buck number 43. Well, Wade Lee's been sliding backwards as we go on board with him there. He's come into the pits. It looks like he's cut a tire down, and it's under a green flag pad. He's going to lose some time there. Well, this is an unfortunate turn of events for Wade Lee, who had been the best Western driver through qualifying. He ran up as high as second and now has had to pit here under green, and that's going to cost him a number of laps. Here's the battle for third. Rob Neely, number 97, in that Mac Tools Dodge Avenger going inside of Dan Shirtlip to take over third as we ride on board with Dan Shirtlip in that Monte Carlo right down to the bottom of the racetrack as he tries to get back around the 97 car. And, oh, we've got caution on the speedway. 28, Steve robley has got a problem as he's pulled his car off the racetrack. And there's 25, Jim Lapsovich, in the pits. And with this caution, we'll take a break and be back with more McCurley Mill in action after this. Welcome back to Delaware Speedway and Cascar late model stock car racing for the Casco Cup. And Dave Jacobs is spun on the front straight, bringing out another yellow flag pad. Well, Dave Jacobs hitting hard into the concrete retaining wall there on the inside. And oh, there's number 10, Paul Mathers. Looks like he gave 72, Ron Van Avery, a little bit of a tap. So that must be from an earlier incident on the racetrack. 74, Duke Sachuk brings the Wagner Parmax Pontiac on a pit road. He'll take on fuel as the crew checks the tires on the car. And here's the Mopar replay of the Jacobs incident. Number 43, Robin Buck gets right up behind the 85 car. And then coming off turn four, Robin tries to go around but collects Jacobs and spins him into the wall. And that car really did take a hard lick. The driver is okay. The field forming up as we prepare to go back to green. And once again, Matt Lake looks them over. The pace car is on pit road. And we're back to racing here at Delaware Speedway in this McCurley Millen 300. Side by side at a turn one as we go on board with 
there, Pat. As a matter of fact, Robin Buck can hit into the pits and get his hood fixed while the yellow's out. Some of the race fans of the VIP area enjoying the late summer weather. Here's Robin Buck as he'll bring that STP Pontiac onto pit road. There you can see the damaged hood. Let's try to listen in to the radio communication between driver and crew. Come on, come on.
you get out just a little bit too wide there, you get into the loose stuff that gets thrown out there from the tires, and around you go. Well, there's the leader, number 93, Alex Nagy. He has brought the AC Delco Monte Carlo on a pit road, number 97, Rob Neely also pitting. And uh, yes, Dan Shirtliff in car number three has also come on a pit road. So this is really going to shuffle around our top ten. There is Shirtliff's car being serviced. Tim Ellis and the crew going to work. And it looks like they'll change right side rubber on the Goodrich Monte Carlo. And there's the Sam Rounds crew getting Alex Nagy back on the track. And Pat, evidently, Steve Jackson. Jefferson is being held at the pit exit because he came in through the back gates into the pits instead of the regular pit entrance. And he's being penalized now. That's going to cost him a lap. Well, a bit of a miscue there by Jefferson as we're about to go back to green. There's Sean Dupuy who has taken over the lead with uh, 93 Nagy along with Shirtlift and Rob Neely all pitting during that last caution period. Again, it has really shuffled our top ten. And you ride on board with the new second place driver, that is DJ Kennington, in the Casperl Dodge Avenger. He is trying to put number 92, Earl Ross, yet another lap down. Earl in the Ford Quality Care Thunderbird. And oh, number four, Alberta driver Kevin Hampton has got a problem. But it looks as though we'll stay green as the Hampton situation has been cleared up. Robin Buck, as you ride on board with the SDP Pontiac driver, he is all over DJ Kennington for that second place position as the two drivers try to get around Earl Ross, number 92. And meanwhile, Sean Dupuy continues to run up front. Robin Buck on the inside of 17, DJ Kennington, and he'll take over that second place position. 17, Kennington getting shuffled back into the third place spot, and now number 03, Jack Monahan is running a lap down. So speedy Jack Monahan, who ran up as high as third earlier, has now dropped the lap down. Again, you ride on board with DJ Kennington and the number 43 car of Robin Buck just ahead of DJ. Buck's teammate, Mike Herniak, in the second of the STP Pontiac cars did not qualify for this event. They had a bit of a disastrous McCurley Millen 300 weekend and did not make the show. There is Kennington, number 17, running that outside groove. Number 74, Duke Sachek has come up here into the fourth place position. And Duke has done a nice job of battling back after making a couple of stops. But full marks to his crew for keeping him on that lead lap. And Duke right now running in the fourth place spot. There you see Robin Buck, 43, who is having his best drive of the season in that SDP Pontiac. And here's a Mopar replay of the pass for fifth. Rob Neely in the 97 Dodge gets loose in turn one, and Alex Nagy just holds his line and motors right on up one spot. Dan Shirtliff, number three, also getting through to push Neely two spots back as we look at this battle now for the second place position. Marvelous run here for Robin Buck when you consider that that car does not have a hood and he's also lost some body work to the left side of the car. Meanwhile, he's able to hold it up in the second place position. Your race leader, number seven, Sean Dupuy, Buck 43 in second. Kennington, number 17, runs in the third place spot as he works the bottom side of the racetrack. Here is 74, Duke Sanchuk in fourth, the last car of Jack Monahan, number 03, and now we'll go side by side in what now becomes the battle for fifth. Dan Shirtliff in car number three and Alex Nagy in car 93 fighting it out. These two drivers very much a part of the Eastern and the Cascar National Championship. And running just ahead of them, Jack Monahan in that 03 car, although he's running a lap down, Monahan running just about on the same pace. We go on board now with Alex Nagy Jr. as he fights it out here with Shirtliff, but for the moment, Dan Shirtliff will take over that fifth place position. Alex Nagy, number 93, who has led many of the laps here this afternoon, runs back in sixth. And there are the new standings with the Bui leading Buck, Kennington, Sobchuk, Shirtliff, Nagy, Neely, and Dave Whitlock, who was the pole sitter. Then it's Don Thompson and Brad Jakes, and it's great to see Brad back racing. He's had his problems, but he's holding down 10th spot right now, Pat. Well, Brad has had a real commitment to this Cascar Super Series, and he's having a good run there in that 10th place spot. And when we talk about long-term commitment, we must include the McCurley Mill and Ackland folks who have supported Cascar racing for 15 years. And Pat, you had a chance to talk to Bob Barrett about their involvement. Well, Pat, obviously, uh, 15 years ago, we began with a single-day format uh, featuring the, uh, the final event on the Super Series of uh, late models, and now uh, 
we've evolved to a, almost a complete week of activities, beginning with a proclamation by the Mayor of London identifying the, the week-long events. Uh, we have hospital visits by the drivers visiting children, uh, driver interviews at uh, uh, different events around the city, uh, qualifying on Thursday with the Twin 100s, uh, blending of other uh, race divisions into the weekend here at the track on Friday, Saturday with the Last Chance Race, which is just an excellent show to make this fine field, and then culminating with the Big 300, and that's the only event on the program today, and it's going to be a great one. Well, it has been a great one so far as we look at this little shuffle for fourth, fifth, and sixth as we go on board with Alex Nagy running into sixth place position across the stripe. He will pull down to the inside of the racetrack alongside of Dan Shirtlip and take over that fifth place position. Well, Dan seems to be sliding a little bit back on the racetrack there, Pat. You can see it looks like he's picked up a little bit of a push in the front end of that car. He might have some tires going away. Tim Ellis and the crew looking on. They appear to be somewhat concerned as we go back to a terrific fight for the second place position. Robin Buck, number 43, in that SDP Pontiac state, just ahead of 17, DJ Kennington in the Castrol Dodge Avenger. And look at Buck's car. He has lost about half of the bodywork, but still manages to hold on to that second place position. And now number 31, Kelly Williams, has brought her Pontiac into the pits and it looks like this may be a major problem. Well, this looks to be a long-term problem, Pat, but we did have a chance to talk to Kelly earlier about her goals for 96. We're still working on achieving those goals. My goal was to, well, qualify in the top 12, which we did most of the time, except for the last couple of races, so I've been really proud of that. And also to finish in the top 10 in points, which we're really not too far off of reaching that mark. So that's, hopefully we can reach that still. Kelly Williams will not attain her goals here in the McCurley Millen 300 as she's climbed out of the race car. As we go back to the battle here for the fourth place position, there's Duke Sajak in that Wagner Parmax Pontiac running in fourth, but now number 93, Alex Nagy, continues to charge. He's had a good race car all afternoon here in Delaware. Now he pulls up alongside of Duke Sajak. Nagy looking for that fourth place position, and he will get it down on the inside of the racetrack. Well, he's not going to hold that, Pat, because the caution's out on the racetrack, and that's going to put him back behind Sawchuck again. Well, there's the reason for that caution flag. Number 86, Don Thompson Jr. in the Robinson Stables. Monte Carlo has backed it into the wall. Looks like he'll get going again, but we are under caution here at Delaware Speedway one more time. As uh, Thompson will roll on around, there's part of the tremendous crowd here who's seen an outstanding race so far here today. And from our champion, Blimp Cam, that is a Sony Hi8 video camera that's affixed to our radio control champion, Blimp. And we'll be back with more Cascar Racing from Delaware in a moment. Welcome back to the McCurley Millen 300 from a very hot Delaware track near London, Ontario. We're under caution at the moment, and we have a new second-place driver. Number 93, Alex Nagy, has moved up to second, shirtlift right behind, but let's have a look at the Mopar replay and the reason for the most recent caution. Four cars involved, Brad Jakes, Steve Jefferson, Don Thompson Jr., and number 25, Jim Lapsovich. This Mopar replay in slow motion shows the 17 car of DJ Kennington into the pits. Bobby Hulme having problems trying to get on the fifth lug nut on the rear wheel. Well, I think he got all five on our right, Pat, but DJ saw the pace car coming around. He'd already lost a couple of positions on the racetrack, didn't want to lose any more, and got straight out there. DJ Kennington back in six as they take the green. The car's on the lead lap. Up on the outside is number seven, Sean Dupuis. Leads them into turn number one. 93, Alex Nagy in second. Shirtlip runs third. There's the 43 car, a little 
job out there right now. Well, you wouldn't know it, Craig, the way he has run here in this McCurley Millet 300. He's right behind Dan Shirtliff as the leaders come back to the strike. Number seven, John Dupuy, still your leader. 93, Alex Nagy in second. Number three, Dan Shirtliff is third. And that is Robin Buck, 43 in that SDP Pontiac, still very much in the hunt. Well, Robin Buck has slid out a little bit, and here comes Dave Whitlock down on the inside. That's exactly what his crew people were talking about when they were talking them around this racetrack path. Robin Buck leaving just enough of an opening for Whitlock to move through on the inside as he will lead them off of Delaware Hill down the back straightaway. Dave Whitlock, your new fourth place driver in the fourth Thunderbird. 43, Robin Buck in fifth in the SDP Pontiac, and then comes DJ Kennington. You ride on board with the race leader, defending national champion, Sean Dupuy in that Delco Battery Monte Carlo. He has really driven a superb race here. And there's a shot of Dupuy's rear wheel and suspension. And what's interesting is the amount of flex in the tire as Sean corners. There, you can see that tire moving around on the rim as it sticks to the racetrack path. Also a great shot of just how much that suspension is working on this bank oval. Your race leader, Sean Dupuy, number seven. But he has got Alex Nagy, 93, parked right on his rear bumper. Shirtlift number three, also very much in it. And now Whitlock in car number 88 on the inside of Shirtlift, looking for third, trying to push the Ford up into that third place position. Remember, Whitlock started on the pole position. Race leader, Sean Dupuy, 93, Alex Nagy, then Shirtlift, then the 88 car of Whitlock and DJ Kennington. Number 17 gives 43, Robin Buck a little tap, and he'll take over that fifth place position. So Robin losing a couple of positions here in the last few laps. As we look at the rundown, Buck back into sixth, Brad Jakes in seventh, Duke Sachuk runs eighth, and in ninth is Rob Neely. He continues to be the last car running on the lead lap. Well, Alex Nagy's got a bit of heat on Dupuy here at the moment, Pat. He won this race last year, and he's hoping for a 96 repeat. And one driver that has been very consistent today is number 88, Dave Whitlock. He's not had a very good season up to this race, and we asked him why. Well, it's been a relatively tough one. I, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Uh, uh, some people thought I'd come back here and run real good right off the start, but these are uh, a real good class of drivers here in Cast Car, and, and the cars are really competitive, and we've, we've struggled a bit, quite admittingly, uh, the first, first two-thirds of the season, and uh, just trying to get the car hooked up has been a real struggle. Well, Dave Whitlock has been hooked up here today at Delaware. Right now he's challenging Dan Sherman for that third-place position. Whitlock down to the bottom of the racetrack will grab the third-place spot as Shirtliff gets shuffled back to fourth. DJ Kennington is running in the fifth-place spot. Sean Dupuy, car number seven, your race leader off of turn four as they come back to the stripe. 93, Alex Nagy right there in second. Then the new third-place driver, Whitlock, and here's DJ Kennington up into the fourth-place spot. So Shirtliff appears to be having some problems. 
Welcome back to the McCurley Mellon 300 for the Castro Cup as race leader Sean Dupuy gets the green flag. Dupuy getting the jump on the field. Here's DJ Kennington all over Dave Whitlock for that second place position. The 43 car there is Robin Buck. He is running a lap down. Whitlock up on the high side here. 17 Kennington trying to squeeze through between Buck and Whitlock and he'll do it. Shirtless also coming through. And here comes Brad Jakes right in between Duke Sanchuk and Whitlock. He will squeeze his way up into the fourth place position. Your race leader, number seven, Sean Dupuy. You can see he's got a problem at the rear of the car. Part of the fiberglass has been torn away in the bumper area, but he continues to run up front. 17, DJ Kennington runs in the second place position. Number three, Dan Shirtliff is third. 35, Brad Jakes up in a fourth. And then it is 74, Duke Sanchuk, who has taken over that fifth place position. So a tough break here for Dave Whitlock as he's lost a number of positions, may have a tire going down on that fourth Thunderbird. There's the white flag, last lap for Sean Dupuy, number seven. He had a slow start to the season, but he has really been coming on in the last four or five races. And this win here, if he can hang on for half a lap, will put him right back up into the national championship. Sean Dupuy, car number seven, off a of turn four. Checkered flag out of the line, and Dupuy will win it, getting to right behind him second. As a long pit road, the celebrations have begun. So the Dupuy family have made it two in a row with Kennington a strong second, followed by Shirtliff and a great race by Brad Jakes. And Kerry Mix coming all the way from 27th starting spot up to 8th. Robin Buck with one of his best finishes. Then the top Western Cascar Series driver Steve Jefferson in 11th, followed by Calgary's Wade Lee. Here's Pat with the winner. Sean Dupuy, uh, that was a tremendous drive. You appear to have a great race car run to you all race long. Yeah, you know, the, the car, the last five laps, it was sputtered, and uh, I don't know, I, I thought we were going to lose it there, but I seen Dave uh, Whitlock back there. He backed up a bit. I said, oh, maybe this is our break. I had to pump the throttle all the way down the straightaway, but I'll tell you, Alex Nagy sure gave me a good go there, and I love racing with Alex, and I'm just proud of this uh, Delco Batteries, GM Performance Parts, Tormont Cat Snap on Tools Monte Carlo. These guys perform week in and week out, give me a great car. I got one of the best crews, I'm telling you, I can't say enough about them. I'd also like to thank my engine builder, Dennis Sibido, who gave me a great motor today, and I'm just happy to be here. DJ Kennington drove the wheels off that Castro car into second place, a great finish. Yeah, it was a good car all day long. We stayed out of trouble, we got in a little trouble in the start there and dropped back, but the car was there all day. Uh, like I say, it was out Castro, Cummins, Ontario, Great Lakes Truck Center, Elgin Motor Freight, McCurley Mellon, none of this would be the way it is, and I wouldn't be here. I've got to thank everybody, and uh, let's see everybody at the next race. And look at this. There are only 17 points separating the first and second places in the Eastern Cascar Championship. So those honors will be decided at our next race. Then in the National Championship, Shirtliff has an almost unbeatable 106-point lead over his Western competitor, Jefferson. Here's Todd Lewis. You know, I just needed a good, strong finish today, and the crew understood that. And We'll go to Mossport now and, and uh, win the Eastern. Have a drink. You deserve it. Thank you very much. So defending Cascar Eastern and National, Sean Dupuy takes a giant step to retaining those championships, Craig, with just an outstanding drive. Oh, what a great drive. And it just goes to show why the man is a champion. And DJ Kennington, what a drive he put in, Pat. Stayed up with the leaders all day long took advantage on those last four or five laps, came through in second spot. And Dan Shirtliff, Dan Shirtliff is Mr. Always There. Good to see him finish in third spot. Well, the results here today at Delaware Speedway should tighten up both our Eastern and our National Championship points. We'll be coming to you next from Mosport International Speedway. That is the final round of the Cascar Eastern Championship. For Craig Hill and Todd Lewis and our entire crew, Pat Gonzalez saying so long from Delaware Speedway. The McCurley Mellon 300 has been brought to you in part by Castrol, manufacturers of GTX. Mopar Performance Parts, your first choice, and Chrysler 5-star service. STP, get your car into STP shape. GM Goodwrench Service Plus and AC Delco. This event is sanctioned by Cascar, Canadian Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. Clothing supplied by Chaco Motorsports Apparel.